In this video, I will talk about the compression factor Z and fugacity F of gases. First, the definition of Z. Z equals the real molar volume of a gas divided by the so-called ideal molar volume. The ideal molar volume is computed using RT over P, assuming ideal gas behavior. And then we have this VM, the actual molar volume on top, this RT over P on the bottom. The final expression is PV over NRT. So Z is simply PV over NRT. For an ideal gas, Z equals 1 because PV equals an RT. For a real gas, it depends. If the attraction between the gas particles dominates, Z is less than 1. If the repulsion dominates, Z is greater than 1. Let's look at the Van Waals gas at low pressures, in which we assume the molar volume is much greater than B. B is the size of each gas particle multiplied by the of constant, and A accounts for the attraction between the gas particles. Now this is the expression of pressure for a Van Waals gas. We plug it in into this PV over RT, or P times the molar volume over RT expression of Z. And we simplify this equation. We get 1 over 1 minus B over Vm minus the attraction term. Over here, if B is much smaller than V sub M, we can approximately say this part is equal to 1 plus B over Vm. And then we combine these two terms. We have Z equals 1 plus 1 over molar volume times B minus A over RT. Now it's clear. When the attraction dominates, this A over RT is greater than B. And this part is negative. Z is less than 1. When the repulsion term dominates, B is greater than A over RT. And then we have a positive term here, C is greater than 1. What if B equals A over RT? When B equals A over RT, T is called the boil temperature. This part is equal to 0, Z is equal to 1. We say the real gas behaves ideally at the boil temperature. Now let's look at the fugacity. Fugacity may be viewed as effective pressure in the formula of chemical potential, mu. Fugacity takes into account the attraction and repulsion between the gas particles. For an ideal gas, we have this formula. Mu at temperature P equals mu at pressure P0 plus RT times LN P over P0. You can replace this P0, the standard state, with any other reference state. For a real gas, we have mu as a function of fugacity. This is equal to mu of the gas in the standard state when this fugacity is standard, plus the correction here, RT times LN F over F0. So you may ask, what's the difference between P0 and F0? First, P0 equals 1 bar and F0 also equals 1 bar. So you wonder if they are the same. No, they are not the same. P0 equals 1 bar tells you the pressure is 1 bar. F0 equals 1 bar tells you the fugacity equals 1 bar. For a real gas, when its pressure is 1 bar, its fugacity is very likely not 1 bar. For a real gas, again, if the attraction term dominates, uh, its fugacity is less than 1 bar, even if the pressure is 1 bar. Its fugacity is greater than 1 bar when the repulsion dominates. So again, we're simply using a different uh, reference here. This is P0. We're using P0 as a reference for an ideal gas, and the chemical potential of an ideal gas only depends on pressure. In here, for a real gas, we use F0 as the reference state. 
and the chemical potential of a real gas depends on its fugacity. At very low pressures, attraction and repulsion are negligible because the gas particles are far, far away from each other. In this case, we have F equals P. So now let's look at the difference between F and P for a real gas quantitatively. For a pure gas with a fixed amount, dG equals negative S dT plus V dP. And mu equals molar Gibbs energy for a pure chemical. When temperature is a constant, G only depends on pressure, and mu only depends on pressure. D mu is equal to molar volume times dP. We'll use this equation twice for the ideal gas and for the real gas. For an ideal gas, we have d mu ideal equals vm ideal times dp. For a real gas, we have d mu real equals molar volume of the real gas times dp. Now we'll take the difference between these two equations. And then we get d mu real minus d mu ideal equals vm real minus vm ideal times dp. We can integrate both sides to get the difference between the change of the real chemical potential and the change of the ideal gas chemical potential. Why did I say change? We are simply changing the initial state from Fi to F. We are changing the initial state from Pi to the final state pressure P. So again, we are just using this uh, integrals to establish the difference between the chemical potential of a real gas and the chemical potential of an ideal gas. And we need an initial state here. Later I will tell you the initial state correspond to F sub I equals P sub I equals zero. Again this is because at a very low pressure approaching zero, the fugacity of the gas equals the pressure of the gas. All right. So now let's expand this integral and this integral. We have on the left hand side the change of the real chemical, real gas, from F sub I to F. And over here we have the change of ideal gas from P sub I to P. Therefore, we need to integrate this d mu real, which is here, and this d mu ideal, which is here. And then over here, uh, we have the real molar volume minus the ideal molar volume. So what is this? The ideal molar volume is simply RT over P. The real molar volume is C, the compression factor, times the ideal molar volume. This is based on the definition of Z. Again, the definition of Z is this guy, the real molar volume divided by the ideal molar volume. And therefore, this term is equal to Z minus 1 times RT over P. However, since I'm using P as the upper limit of the integral, right here I'm using this P prime, here and here, as the dummy variable to be integrated. Now look at the left hand side. It looks very complicated. But assuming the gas starts from an extremely low pressure, well how about approaching zero pressure? And then we have Fi equals P sub I. And we can replace every F, F sub I with P sub I. So this term becomes mu at T and P sub I. This F sub I is also replaced with P sub I. However, do not replace F with P because both F and P are at finite pressures. In this case, P can be greater than, uh, F can be greater than P if the repulsion dominates. F can be smaller than P if attraction dominates. Now after we did the replacement, we can tell this term and this term are exactly the same. And also this PI and this PI will cancel. 
Now let's simplify this equation. We cancel this one with this one. We have this expression here. This PI and this PI cancel. And also we can divide both sides by RT. And then we have this equation. Now it's pretty simple. This equation is very simple as long as we know Z. Z equals PV over NRT. So really, given a temperature, we just need to measure how this Z changes with pressure. So we just measure the pressure, the actual pressure, the actual volume of the gas at different pressures. All right, and then use this PV equals NRT. You obtain the value of Z. And once you have the value of Z, under different pressures, we can integrate this Z minus 1 over P numerically, and we can get this integral value. And then on the left hand side, it's actually the logarithm of F over P, therefore, the fugacity is simply something times pressure. What's that something? That's e to the power of this integral times P. And we define this e to the power of this integral to be the fugacity coefficient, gamma. Therefore, gamma is simply f over p over here. And gamma is e to the power of this integral. Now let's analyze the attraction, repulsion, the compression factor, and the fugacity again. When the attraction dominates, the actual molar volume is smaller than the ideal molar volume. Therefore, Z is less than 1. When Z is less than 1, this integral is negative. e to the power of negative number is less than 1. Therefore, the fugacity coefficient is less than 1. Fugacity is less than pressure. When the repulsion dominates, the actual molar volume is greater than the ideal molar volume. Therefore, Z is greater than 1. And this integrand is positive. This integral is positive. E to the power of a positive number is greater than 1. And then this gamma is greater than 1. The fugacity is greater than the pressure. In summary, if the attraction dominates, Z is less than 1, gamma is less than 1, the fugacity is less than the pressure. When the repulsion dominates, Z is greater than 1, the fugacity coefficient is greater than 1, and the fugacity is greater than the pressure.